She's a strong person. She's very brave too. She, like I told her last year, she is a true pioneer woman. She came to Singapore when she was only 23. And three days after she married Dad, she left her hometown in Bangka and she came all the way here. Not easy at that time and Singapore was still so, so unknown. And to leave all her family behind, all her loved ones, must have been so frightening for her. But Mum, true to the spirit of, of a pioneer, she came. She came and she started life with that. She, she, like a true and good wife that she is, she did everything that she could to help that make a good home and a good family for him and for us when we came along. Mom took her sewing skills when she came to Singapore. She used her skills to help dad because we were not well to do. We was, we, it was, life was tough for her. So she, she did all she could to help dad. She sewed, she baked. And in, in her own way, she, she showed how much she loved that when she did all that for him. And she never, she never complained. She did it willingly. And she did it because she knew that this is where she is, where she has come to be. She knew that this is where she has started her life with that. And so mom never complained. In her earlier years, she doesn't complain. We have never seen her complain. We would see her day after day, night after night, as she was so bent over the, the the singer sewing machine, trying to poke the, the, the put the little thread into the, the needle, and and then in the sometimes even late at night then you hear the the word, the you know the, the, the sewing machine woo, 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 and you know that she's trying quickly to finish a piece of a, a clothing for, for her client, literally her client. And you will see these clients coming to our house just to try on and see whether it fits fits them. And this is a sewing part. And I, and I never knew, until recently, I, I found out that mom actually uh, taught people, taught her friends sewing actually when she was in Bangka. And so she took a skill to Singapore. Not only that, mom was also a baker. She baked, every Chinese New Year, she would bake cookies and she would bake her famous kuih lapis for sale. And her kuih lapis was very popular. And dad was always very proud of her kuih lapis. Not only would she sell her kuih lapis for sale, he would always ask mom, can you bake extra? Then he would give it to his bosses. And mom was a good cook. She loved to cook, actually. She, she, her, her gado gado, dad always likes her gado gado. Whenever um, it's Chinese New Year, he would always invite his friends over for lunch and would get mom to cook her gado gado. So mom, mom is a good cook. She can cook, she can bake, she can, she can sew. Uh, her, her children never actually picked up those skills. The only thing I took over from my mom is her, her kuih lapis. And I told my mom, don't worry, your kuih lapis recipe will be with me, with, with the family, and I'll, and I'll continue to pick your kuih lapis and, and give it to your, your grandchildren and to your children to eat for Chinese New Year. Okay? And I promised my mom that I'll always do that for you. With, of course, the help of my sister and my children. Uh. And mom, and mom, like, like Shauna mentioned, when mom had the grandchildren, she put her life for the grandchildren. She willingly took the grandchildren in. She looked after them from the time that they were babies all the way until it was time for them to go to school, to childcare. And mom would do it willingly. Every day we would bring the children, our children to her and to dad. Every day she would spend time with them. She saw them grow. She, she, she would feed them. She would, she would care for them. And when, and when they fall ill, it would hurt her so much. Especially when there are times when our children would end up in the hospital, mom would cry. And she goes to the hospital, she'll cry and says, Why? Why did this have to happen to all our grandchildren? Why did it have to happen to my grandchildren? She'll cry. Her heart would break when she sees the, the grandchildren in the hospital. When she saw Timothy, first time she saw Timothy, she saw Evan, she saw Sarah. She cries. She cried each time she comes to the hospital. But she says, Never mind, it's okay. They'll get better soon and they'll get well. And when they, get, and when they all got well, she was there for them. 
She was always, always there for the family. And that's mom. She's always, always there for the family, unquestioning me. She never questioned why must it be her. Never. She's always self before all of us. Yeah, she will always put herself before us. But mom, I see mom is a is a true, is a true brave woman. Um, she couldn't speak English very well, but she spoke she, she struggled with the English with us. And she spoke Mandarin to, to Albert, with Albert. But she decided, I think in her late 30s, in her 40s, or thereabout, she decided to sign up for the basic English course. Can you imagine? For Paul trying to learn English, and then he had to teach her grammar and then and help her with the homework, how to what are her tenses and, and, and all that. But Coco did very well after that. She did. And we have a photo actually of her receiving her certificate. She did very well for her for her English. And today people when they when they hear Papa speak in English to them, they say, Hey, your your mom speaks pretty good English. Yeah, but in earlier in the earlier years, no. Yeah. So you see, when mom came, she couldn't speak dialect. But she struggled, she, she took the courage to step and she learned English, she learned dialects. I'm quite sure it was very tough for her trying to speak Hokkien and Yoshi, and I don't think they had that in Bangka. Yeah. So, so there are small little instances that shows her that mom is a very resilient lady. But in 2020, exactly the year from the time that she passed on, that's when life started to change for mom. Mom's liver cirrhosis took, uh, decided to flare up. And that's when life actually took a change for mom. She went in and out of hospital many, many times. The first time she went in was in Easter last year. And on 19th of April last year, the doctors told us, be ready because anything can happen. Your mom may, may, may just leave us at that time. But mom made a miraculous recovery. God, I guess, wanted her to spend more time with us. She pulled through and she did so well. She did so well. But the liver cirrhosis started, continued to flare up and give her issues. Mom, in total, had 14 hospital stays throughout 2020. It saddened her to have to go in and out of hospital, but I told mom, look, don't, don't, and mom, mom can take instruction quite well. I told mom, don't, don't be, don't be sad, you know, they have to go in and in out of hospital, don't see it as inconvenience. Why don't you look at it positively? Take it as a staycation. You know, you take it as a staycation, then it won't be so bad. Staycation, you, you, you have the opportunity to have free food, although you don't like hospital food, your, all your grandchildren, your children always like it for you. But it's a staycation, we make new friends. You have nice nurses to attend to you. you have everybody will at your back and forth. So let's see it as a staycation. And she did that. She saw it as a staycation. And so it, it made her hospital stay a little bit more bearable. Okay? She was quite sane about it. But it, it made it a lot, a lot more bearable for her. But 31st March this year, the, her situation became so bad that we had to ward her. And this time round, when we watered her, it took a, a, a hard toll on her because the medication that they used to help her to get rid of the water retention and, and the water overload and, and the toxin build up was a bit too much for her. So, and, and you could see, you could see that at this point in time, mom was really struggling because she kept, she had problems trying to breathe. She was breathless throughout the entire time. But even though she appeared breathless, the amazing thing about mom was throughout this entire time, she was lucid. She never forgot, uh, she, she, she could remember every single one. Every single person who came to visit, she remembered, she could call out their name, and she asked after them, how are you doing? When my brother-in-law had his medical, she asked him, she remembered, she asked him, so how did it go? So right to the very end, mom always put others before her. She put others before her, she would ask, you know, and she would, she would always show her caring side without fear. So, mom was always very considerate right to the end, very, very considerate. And mom had control. I realized mom had control because right to the very end, she could tell the doctors whether or not she wanted 
um, she gave consent. When the doctor says I have to give you transfusion on that that night on Sunday when she was start, when she started to, to lose a lot of blood and she started to hemorrhage, and we decided that she should have transfusion. Actually, the doctor asked me, so should we go ahead? I said, you ask mom. Then he actually went through. The doctor went through with her and, and told her what he was going to do and explained to her the possible side effects and he asked her, are you okay with it? She says, yes. She gave her consent right to the end. And after the doctor left, the thing that she asked me is, am I going to be put to more tests? I said, no, no more tests. Just a transfusion to help you, hopefully to help ease the, the, the hemorrhaging but no more tests, because I think that's the last thing that mom wanted. And we know, we know, and I know that she will never want to put herself to any more tests. But still, she was in control. And the last thing that she did before she finally said goodbye to us was when the pastor talked to her. And he asked her when he her was she ready. And she said, yes. You see, the entire time, mom was in control. Mom was in control for every single decision that she made. And that's good. And I think, and to me, to me, I think there's nothing more that I can ask for. To see my mother, to see your papa, being able to make a decision, to say, and, and still to have that confidence, say, this is what I want for myself. I know you all want the best for me, but this is what I want for myself. And she was able to make the decision. And she was clear in her mind what she wanted for herself. And when she finally decided to leave, she left quietly. Maybe, like somebody told me, maybe your mother didn't want you all to see how she may struggle towards the last few minutes. She just wanted you all to remember her at that point in time when you last saw her. And you leave that with that memory of her so that you don't feel sad towards the last time. I think my mother would want us at this point to be very happy for her to know that she has lived a good life. She has been there for all of us. And she will continue to be there. Not in body, but in spirit. She will always continue to be there. She will continue to be in your heart. Okay, so every time we have her birthday, her, her anniversary, we will always remember her. And the best thing that she will always remember is whenever we have a party and all that, remember the toast to her. Okay, remember the toast to her. That was a good thing that all of you did, the grandchildren did last night. We all toasted her. Okay, Papa was like that. Each time we have a party, give her a toast. Okay, so mom, this is. This is, uh, we say good, we, okay, I won't say we say goodbye, till we meet again, okay? If it's not goodbye, it's till we meet again. Have, enjoy yourself in heaven, eat all the xiaolongpa, like Teresa says, eat all the xiaolongpa you want, drink all the whiskey you want, until we meet again. Take care, mom.